Spirit to empower us to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. You know, I was looking at my notes when I started uh, with a computer in 2006, and I, I taught on the nine manifestations, which I very seldom do on a Sunday morning service. And on the reservation, and also, we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Also, in Mexico, and also in Guatemala, when I used to go there. And I found out whenever you teach on the gifts of the Spirit, the church falls asleep. And I could never figure that out. And Elder Pete, you've been with me when that's happened. The pastors ask us to, but see, you have to teach. People want to be preached to. They don't want to be taught. And so this morning, I'm believing, we're awake this morning, and I'm not going to go line by line. I don't know where I'm going to go right now, but th this is a teaching about the nine manifestations of the Spirit. Amen? Nine is a, a very good number. It's a complete number. Three times three. Three is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It, so this number is complete. There's nine fruit. There's no S on it. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. And it's funny, when you look at Moses' tabernacle, and you see the, the all together you can add the nine branches together. There's only three on inside, but the way they're, they're, they're made. And what happens when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit? Illumination. <clears throat> I've had older pastors tell me, for some reason, after I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's like somebody gave me a new pair of glasses. Because you see differently. Amen? Amen? And so, if we're not operating in them, and I asked the Lord, I said, you, you know, I, I'm simple. I need something simple. So, you know, I'm watching this show I think it was Chicago Fire or something. And, I, and the guy's got a hose, right? And you can tell they're on a screen because the water is barely coming out. <laughs> so I know this is a fake fire that they're putting out, right? Well, some of us are using a fake hole, hose and we call ourselves Christians. And then we even call ourselves spirit-filled Christians, Christians, or we might even call ourselves Pentecostal, and yet there's no sign of it in the church. How can we declare a thing and not do it? You know, it's for your closet. I've been told that too. Where's that in the Bible? Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Amen. You guys, Amen. you're going to have to learn if you want to. See, I, I love what Marge taught on last Wednesday night. She taught on, we're not, we're not fighting the devil. Amen. We have to learn how to speak. Yes. And so now I want you to picture this. Here's the fireman. They've got the hose ready, and you can tell it's ready because, you know, it swells up, and they're, they're holding on, two guys holding on, you know. Well, isn't it amazing they still have to turn it on? Amen. Come on, anybody getting this? Yes. You want to operate in the gifts of God, you're going to have to turn it on because the hose is full. By God, we're full with the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. We've got the Creator in us. We've got Amen. the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All of that's in Christ is in us right now. Amen. And Jesus had the audacity to say, as the Father has sent me, I have sent you. <laughs> so, have you ever read about how he, he was sent? You know, go to go tell John the works that I do. I'm I'm preaching to the poor. I'm raising the dead. The blind see. The deaf hear. That's the works he says. So Jesus turns around and says, John 14 and 12. If you believe in me, the works that I do, the works that I do, shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. And then it goes down to say the reason why we're not seeing the greater works, it says that the, that the Son would be glorified. Amen. See, every time you pray for something, is the Lord going to get glory in it? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Amen. Most of our prayers are not being answered because it's for us. Amen. Everything has to be for Him. We sang that song this morning. It's all about Him. Amen. Without Him, we're nothing. I mean, we're simple. 
There's nothing good in us but Him. We're, we're perfect in here, but up here we still got what is born of the flesh is flesh. And look at John 7, verses 37, 38, and 39. What does He say? He says, if you're thirsty, come. He says, if you believe in me as the Scripture has said... Out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. Then he goes on in the next word. It says it's going to happen with the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit in our church? Where's the Holy Spirit in our Christianity? He's the power of God. And if you want to see the power of God, you're going to have to get involved with the Holy Spirit. That's why my prayer is always, Holy Spirit, empower me in right. Jesus' name Amen. to preach to your people, Amen. to teach your people Amen. how to walk and how to talk. Amen. I'm a father. I want to be able to, and I can't do this. I want to be able to tell you when you're done in the bathroom, pick up your toilet paper and the paper on the floor. I want to say, clean it before you leave it. But I can't say that because I'll offend you. Well, it's the same thing with preaching the word. I'm going to offend you because I'm going to tell you the truth. And you won't like it sometimes. But we're not doing the greater works. And the next reason why we're not doing it, in John chapter 14, when you go down at 13, 14, 15, it says, you keep my commandments. Well, I'm prejudiced. You're done. Baby, there ain't no, there ain't no spirit moving with you, baby. I shall love the Lord thy God, thy whole heart, thy whole soul. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, I hate me. So how on earth can I love you, Pete? Amen. So how do I find out if I love myself? Amen. When I'm hungry, I feed myself. <gasps> That's so deep, Eli, Jose. I don't know if we can handle this today. Oh, my God. Oh, it's time for church. Let me pray if I should go. <laughs> Come on, that's how stupid we are. It says not forsaking the assembling of the saints. Look at how many people today are not going to go to church because they've been hurt from church. Because they've been told you're not healed because you don't have enough faith. Well, I can show you scripture where the, the dead guy didn't have any faith and got raised from the dead. So you can't use that one. Go, your servant is healed. Well, that servant didn't have any faith. We've got to quit pointing the finger at people and start looking in the mirror and saying, I'm the problem. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I'm telling you, Amen. You, you, you want to get well, you want to get healed this morning, you're going to have to admit you're the problem. <coughs> and until you admit that, you're going to have a miserable life, even if you're speaking in tongues. Yes. And I tell you, the Lord just dealt with me this week about... You notice we, we say our outreach, our ministry. This is not my church. This is our church. Amen. You know, I, I'm just uh, counseling with, a, with another minister that wants to come under our covering. But he doesn't want to be in our services because he wants to do... It. Wow, I don't believe in walls. <laughs> you know... I won't even chew you out if you went to another church on Sunday. Hey, if I'm not feeding you, go, baby. Go someplace that's going to feed you. Because you're not, you don't belong to me. You belong to Jesus Christ. we got to get off the titles. You know, don't respect the person. Respect the title. I'm going to make mistakes. Okay, I'm going to say the wrong things at times. You know what? But God has called me to do what I'm doing. You respect that, not the person. Like my boss at Safeway, one of them, my district manager, started coming to our church. And I says, uh, Mr. Simpson, please don't come to our church. He says, why? Because everybody thinks I'm brown-nosing. And then he says, will you quit calling me Mr. Simpson in the church? I says, yes, sir, Mr. Simpson. He was my boss. He was my boss whether we were at church or whether we were out on the field. He was my, what do you call me out on the field, Pete? Pastor, Pastor He calls me Pastor Al. You know why? Other people are going to hear it. What do I call them? They're pastors. What do I call 
Rob, Pastor Robert when I go up to his church. I'm not honoring the person. I'm honoring the title that God has given them. And, and I want to tell you something. And I say this in church, and I'm saying this with all my heart. God has really gifted you with me. I'm a gift to you. And in Mexico, you don't know how many times I've said, uh, Pat would be a good one. I've got a present for you, Pat. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Can you receive it? Mm -hmm. Notice the bow. What color is the bow, you guys? Come on, ladies. Red. Red. Red? red. red? Okay, it's yes. red. Okay, I'm going to give her this gift. Thank you. Now, as a woman, what do you think she's going to do? Open it. Go ahead, open it. You know what? That's what you've got to learn to do with the gift that God's given you. Amen. You've got to learn how to open me up. And take what God has given me for you this morning. Amen. Amen. And so many Amen. people that have a familiar spirit with me, because they already know what I'm going to say. Well, the last time I preached on this was 2006 in church. That was a long time ago. And so we probably won't even get to that message today, but I'm going to try. Because we got next week, if we're still here. Amen? I'm not in a hurry. I don't think God's in a hurry to come back. There's too many lost people. The world's a mess. We have a ministry, you guys. We've got something to give. You've got kids, teenagers that are killing themselves. They're cutting themselves. I've had to deal with all this stuff. They don't even know that's against the Bible. That's against God. Amen. 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 Did you find 1 Corinthians 14 yet? 12. 12. Notice what it says in verse, chapter 12, verse 1. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be what? what? What's that word? In other words, I don't want you to be stupid. How many of you know there's more debate between this and chapter 14? God is so perfect, he puts the love chapter in between the two. Because we are ignorant in the gifts of God. And I remember as a child, I had an ability to read people's uh, uh, ma mail. I didn't know why I could do that. I, I didn't know why. My, my prophetess granddaughter, she's this big. She says, Papa, why did these kids all come to me and I have to tell them things? Amen. <laughs> See, you, you got this when you got saved. It's in you, but if you don't turn on the holes, you're going to come every Sunday and just sit there and say, yeah, that's really good. I believe you can do this, Pastor, but I could never do it. I'm going to show you this morning the gifts are for us. Amen. The gifts of the Spirit, Yadira, are for the body of Christ. The body heals itself. Yes. Your body Amen. is made to heal itself. Amen. Come on, you're going to have to get that. Amen. You know, you don't go hide in the corner when you're sick. You come to church, let the elders of the church anoint you with oil, and the prayer of faith shall save or heal the sick. Amen. Amen? We've got to be humbled enough to believe what God's Word says, not what I say. Amen? Amen. So we're not to be ignorant. Everybody agree with that? Yes. This is so important that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is involved. Go down uh, to verse 4. There, uh, yes, verse 4. There are diversities or different kinds of gifts. These are talking about charisma gifts, but the same Spirit. So we see the Holy Spirit's involved. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. Now we see Jesus involved. There are diversities of activities or functions, but it's the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And we keep saying in 1 Peter 4.10, each one has a gift. Minister it to one another. Amen. 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 And I, I want to show you something amazing. On your, on your sheet here. Because I want us to turn over to Mark 16. This is how I started moving in the gifts of the Spirit. I didn't even know the Bible was true until I was 30 years old. One of the first things God gave me was what was supposed to follow me. And I found out way back then, it doesn't help you to go to this ministry and that ministry and this ministry and that ministry. You belong in a local church. And from there you go out. 
But I found out these signs will follow them that believe. See, the nine manifestations, they're visible. Come on, they're visible. Amen. We just spoke in tongues this morning. The Bible says when people come in, they're either going to say they're either unsaved and they're going to say you're out of your mind. And I say, thank you. That's the only thing God gave us that we cannot mess up. Because when you speak Amen. in your prayer language, you're speaking directly to God. Amen. 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 But the Bible says in chapter 13 of, of this, this book, we understand in part and we prophesy in part. That's in 1 Corinthians 13. And, and so that's what... When we prophesy, it's only a, in the in part realm. When we the, have the word of wisdom, it's only in an in part realm. It's a part or a fragment of what God is saying. Like I told somebody last week, they said, you, you have a word for me. Well, you know, I see things in the spirit. And I saw a raft with a sail on it. And I saw the wind of the Holy Spirit blowing this person. Now, I don't know what this person thought of it. But all week long, I'm thinking, wow, the Holy Spirit's guiding this person. Mm -hmm. The wind, the, the Holy Spirit's guiding this person. Because he didn't have any paddles or anything. Amen. So how's Amen. he getting there? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Come on, how are we going to get there? <laughs> By the power of the Holy Spirit. How are you going to move into gifts? By the power of the Holy Spirit. But you're going to have to turn on the hole of the holes. I, I think that's good revelation. Amen. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. You know, we're praying for people to come to our church. They're never going to come until you go get them. The Bible says go. See, we love to pray. Our excuse is we just pray. Pastor, I'm praying for you. Well, I pray for you too. Big deal. I just pray the God's will in your life. That's it. Could care less about anything else. Amen. That's what I want you to pray for me. God's will. Amen. So here I am, I'm 30 years old, and my Bible opens to this. I found out when you're a baby, you can just open up the Bible and the Lord talks to you. But that doesn't seem to work as you get older. <laughs> the Lord. It's like you have to work for it. You know what I'm saying? Come on. When you're first born again, it, miracles are easy. But boy, after you get a little older, it, 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 after your diapers have been, you're not in diapers anymore, and it starts... Don't have to suck on the nipple anymore. All of a sudden, things change in your life. You have to start growing up. Notice in verse 16, and I want you to see it and hear it. He who believes. Okay, everybody stop right there. Who's he talking to? Oh, Elder Pete said he's talking to him. He who believes. Who's, who's he talking to? What's it? The Bible is who? God speaking to me. See, until you understand that this book is just for you. Amen. Gene, it's just for you. Amen. 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 Now, once you get it, now you can share the bread. Because where that loaf of bread? That's what it says. <laughs> where that loaf of bread? Take a piece of it this morning. Amen. Enjoy it. He's prepared a table in the midst of our enemies. Amen. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow who? Come on. Who are they going to follow? No, oh, wait a minute. Just the apostles. Does it say apostles? No. Does it say uh, evangelists? How about pastors? How about teachers? How about pastors? These are for believers. I'm 30 years old. And I just had a birthday. That was a long time ago. And I was so excited. I know some, most of you have heard me say this. I must have read this ten times because I knew I was going to find out what followed me. Amen. Notice, we follow Jesus. The reason why we're not seeing the signs, remember, and this, is, this hurts me as bad as I'm going to hurt you. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you a fisherman of men. And I'm asking each one of us, look in the mirror, how many did you catch this year? How can we catch when we're too busy about ourselves? When you get out of you, I said that this morning we were singing, it's all about Him. When, we get, when I get out of me, I have the most fun. I can be at a funeral, nobody's listening, and I'm having fun. 
Because the word is alive in me. And you have to learn how to suck it out. And you have to learn how to pay attention. Amen. You know, somebody said this morning, I don't have any discipline. Well, martial arts and working for a company that taught you discipline, it says without discipline, we're going to die. We need discipline. How do we get that? You start, how, how do you learn how to tie? Like Jerry used to teach, start with a penny. Be faithful to that penny. And before you know it, you'll be tithing 10%. Then after that, you say, that's not enough. And you don't even have to tithe in the New Testament. You're supposed to give it all to me, and I'll give you what you need. That's if you want to go by the New Testament. And I don't want to get into that. <laughs> Got enough problems without yours. And these signs will. See, if we don't go be... You dear, if we, Elder you dear, if we don't see this... Nothing else I'm going to preach is going to matter. Because, you, oh, well, that's good for you, Pat. You, you're a pastor. See, you already lost it. you got to say, hey, he's talking about me. The Bible is God speaking to me. Right now, he's talking directly to you, Amen. Gina. Amen. He's talking to you, Amen. Pat, right now. Amen. Amen. And he says, and these signs, oh, man, the, come on. If you get this this morning, your life is going to change. For 47 years, I've seen signs and wonders every place I go. Amen. Why? Because I dare to believe it. Amen. I dare to, I remember even when I was a store manager and had lunch with people, and I would read their mail and just shock them, but they'd get saved. Amen. See, if when you start moving in the, quit waiting for me to move in the gifts, you start moving in the gifts. Amen. You've been, you're under this covering. You, dear, you said it this morning. Each one of us has a gift. Practice after church. I'd like to see you. Jordan, you're closest. Come up here. I'd like to uh, see, uh, see you uh, start practicing. Let's say I've never prophesied over anybody before. And, and I, first of all, I want to meet her anyway because I'm 21 years old and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, Carol, you'll love this. If Carol comes up to you, and if you ever notice she likes to touch you, huh? yeah. you know, sometimes she puts her hand on my belly, and it, but I know she's going to prophetically speak over me when she does. Let's see, I'm going to say, Jordan, is it, I'm at home, and I notice you come to church, but the pastor wants me to experience prophecy. Can I prophesy over you? And you won't laugh at me? <laughs> now, what if by faith I said that? Come on, what if by faith I said that? And, and the Lord would say to you, as I saw you under, under this, uh, I think you love waterfalls. Have you ever thought of that? Yeah. <laughs> And you're, you're under this waterfall. And I saw the water just coming down upon your head. And it just covered you. And that was the covering of the Holy Spirit. It's all over you. You know, I didn't have anything for her. But by faith, I just spoke it. Amen. And that's what you've got to learn how to do. It's okay to say, I need to try this. Did that make any sense to you? Yeah, see, it made a lot of sense to me. I did. I like. I was just sitting there. I was like, I think I could. Use, I think I could use a word today. <laughs> but, see, but but you know why? See, she's asked. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us came this morning asking, Lord, I want to receive today? You can sit down now. I'm not 21 anymore. <laughs> you act like it. I act like it. Thank you. I'll receive that one. <laughs> Oh, these birthdays. <laughs> you know, this is so exciting. I, I want you to get it. These signs shall. How many of you know what shall means? It's the same word for will, right, you teachers? Okay. You will. These signs will follow those who believe. And that word in the Greek is have as believed. In my name. They shall, they will cast out demons. Amen. First thing you're Amen. told you're going to do. Amen. Amen. Come on. That, that was an experience for me. Amen. I had never seen a demon-possessed man. And in Bible study one night, one, one's trying to kill me. 
That's when I got to experience the name of Jesus. And I saw this man totally delivered and became a Christian right after. And then it says, in my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. And all of you that just think it died with the apostles, this word new and tongues, it's a language you cannot learn. If you look it up in the Greek, he's talking about a language you will never understand. And when we get to the gifts of the Spirit, which I doubt we will today, the diversities of tongues is not your tongues, your prayer language. Because in 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it says, When you pray, and the King James says, In this unknown tongue, you speak mysteries to God. No one understands you. So how can you interpret something no one understands? It's not one of the nine manifestations, and people don't realize that. Only two or three of you can speak in diversities of tongues. That's what it's talking about. But pastors, I've had people go, well, you, you had more than two or three people speaking in tongues. Well, day of Pentecost, we only have 120. All of Cornelius' house, 12 men in chapter 19, the Holy Spirit never said, stop. See, you've got to learn this stuff. I remember when we went into the church in, in Scottsdale, or Scottsdale, and these people said they've been praying for two years or whatever because Foursquare was there before us. And that Sunday morning we prayed in tongues. They got up and literally ran out of the church in fear because they were told tongues was of the devil. Is anybody reading their book? <laughs> Nobody's reading the book. They don't test the pastors. You know, even when I was in a religion, got a book, my dad told me, whatever that man up there is saying, that's God speaking. Was it really? When we only understand it part, and we speak it part? Come on, this is a revelation for you. Don't wait for somebody to hold your hand. Start holding somebody else's hand. You'll be amazed how much it's going to help you. You know, and I, I learned this at Safeway. You want to get promoted... Who's your replacement? Because this is not my ministry. We don't, it's all him. Amen. And when he's called it, we can't, I can't say this is my ministry because it isn't. It's his. And you've got to say that too. Lord, you call me to do this, but it's not for you. It's for us. When you think it's for you, you close out everybody. You can't touch me. You can't get near me. How many pastors, they don't let the, these guys can chew me out. Do I get upset? I need help. I can't walk on water. Till that, I need help. You know, and, and the Bible talks a lot. It, it, read Proverbs every day and your life will change. You, you read Proverbs and it talks about only a fool doesn't accept correction. How many fools are here today? Come on, are we all fools? But this is the way my mother taught me. Well, what if your mother was wrong? <laughs> this is what the Bible says. God helps those who help themselves. Would you show me that scripture? But we, I, we hear it. They quote this stuff, and I can't find it. <laughs> you know, come on. But, well, the priest said, or Pastor Al said, who cares what I'm saying? What is God saying to you? He wants to say something to you. He wants to say you're valuable. You're my son. You're my daughter. I've chosen you. You didn't choose me. I chose you, and I've even ordained you to go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, and whatever I, you ask the Father, I'm going to give it to you. Well, I can't even believe the signs that are going to follow me. How on earth can I get that one? Come on. We're wondering why nothing is happening. It's not because of God. The, the, the hose is full to the brim. But somebody's going to have to turn it on. I just had to turn it on. I had nothing. But I turned it on and he spoke. Amen. Uh, I, to me, that was very powerful. I saw a covering over you that nobody's going to take. Amen. You, you, I tell you, you get this mantle, nobody's going to take it from you. Listen to this. They shall take up serpents. 
What are serpents? They hiss. What did they do to Eve? What did Adam go and do? They're always gossiping. Serpents in the Bible is talking about uh, false doctrine, especially. We have a lot of that going on right now. You know, because we don't, we don't test the preacher. Test all things, hold fast what is good. And if they drink any deadly poison, the deadly poison is actually, that's the doctrines of men. The serpents are the demonic forces that are against us. Right? If they drink any deadly, anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And those of you that have had to have chemotherapy and you stand on this scripture, you wonder why you got sick. Remember, this is a book of spirit. And you've got to trust God in every situation. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Who's he talking to here? Believers. Amen. 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 Go to verse 20. And here's the key to these five things. And they went out. <laughs> Come on. How many of us, by the time we get to the car after church, all we can think about is what am I going to have for lunch? And we've already forgotten. Uh, Minister Dave said that this morning about, you know, it says in James, we look in the mirror and when we leave, we forget what we saw. Amen. Amen. How many of us even bother 48 years of experience? We just throw it, leave it on a seat. And yet, I wonder what I should study. Why don't you try studying what the pastor is studying? You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed what you're going to get. Because you're going to get it different than I got it. He's going to talk to you differently than he does to me. And so he says, and they went out, and what did they do? They hid themselves, of course. Locked themselves in the closet, right? And they went out and what? Preach. And here's the key. When you go out, the Lord working with them. We don't work for God. We work with God, confirming the word. How? Come on. How? With signs. Every time you minister to somebody, every time we have a service, think about what, what sign is going to follow this, Lord. Amen. And I, I remember when I was young, I just believed every time I talked to somebody, every time I preached, there would be a sign and wonder. And after a while, you get complacent. I know none of, none of you ever do, but I have. And this is stirring me up. Because I know what it says. Now it's up to me to turn the hose on. Come on. Am I talking to anybody or is it just me? Amen. 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 Let's go back over to... Oh man, I got time. You guys are in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but notice on your sheet in Psalm 65, 8. I want to read that. They also who dwell in the furthest parts are afraid of your sign. That, that science is an evidence, a miracle, a mark. People are afraid of tongues because of some of the horror. We've got people rolling on the floor, barking like dogs. Uh, Gina, I'm in Mexico. I don't know if you were with me when they were crawling on their... I, I'm in Mexico. Uh, I, I, Freddie was my interpreter then. And uh, I start preaching, and all of a sudden, a lot of the, the, the uh, native Mexicanos... They, they got on the floor, and I, I'm, I'm preaching, and they're getting on the floor. And all of a sudden, they had their hands back like this, and they're going, and they're choking to death. I said, Pastor Matthew, what, what is going on? Oh, we just had a, I won't tell you where he was from, a, a minister. This is a move of the Holy Spirit. I said, in Jesus' name, you tell him to get up off the floor right now. This is the devil. Amen. How much garbage have we set out in the field? God doesn't bring the pain. Those women were in pain and they were choking to death. What does the serpent do? He crawls around on his stomach. God would never have us crawling around on our stomach except we're in the presence of God. Amen? And so 
I've witnessed so many things that have happened. But if you don't know what the scripture says, oh yeah, this is, they agreed with it. Another church, the big church uh, in Kalima, uh, this Baptist man told his daughter, he says, uh, those people from that, this other country, they're not from God. They would prophesy and their head would almost turn around all the way around. They would go so fast like this, it's wonder they didn't break their neck and prophesying. He says, that's not God. A Baptist man knew that wasn't God. How come the pastor didn't? Because we need something new. We, we don't even know about the old. We don't even understand what happened. When we get this down, then we're going to start talking about the third day. And we'll be walking in His power. Amen. Come on. But you have to desire this. Those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. If you're a Sunday morning goer and that's it, you're not hungry. Jesus said, come on to me all you who are thirsty. Notice they had to come. All that came to Jesus were healed. How do we come to Jesus? By believing His Word. Why are we depressed? Why are Christians in such a mess? Why do we have so many divorces? I didn't say you, I said we. We're doing something wrong. When we get out of here, I asked the Lord this morning, Get me out of here. Lord, I want you to take over. You know, I, I don't have anything to tell you. I don't know anything about sports anymore. I'm a boring person. No, I'm serious. I can't talk to you about worldly things. I don't want to. Amen. I can <laughs> listen to your jokes <laughs> and pray in tongues at the same time. I have no desire for any of that anymore. Do I like sports? Yeah, but I'm not going to sit there for three hours watching a stupid game that gets slotted. I might turn it on and off. But I'm just telling, and that's just me. That does not make me happy anymore. I'd rather sh watch a shoot-up show. <laughs> or, or Chicago Fire. Man, I have a whole new respect for firemen, let me tell you. <laughs> I know it's a movie, and it's fake water, but it still tells you what they go through. Amen. And look what the policemen are going through today. Some of them are just like this Protestant pastors that have done just as bad as the other guys have done. Nothing's uncommon to man. So don't just point your finger at one religion. If it's doing it in one religion, it's doing it in another. Because we're humans. And without discipline, the Bible calls us beasts. We, we are beast. And boy, the way we can kill people, blow ourselves up and kill people, we're beast. So how do you get out of the beast nature? Get into Jesus. And then you're going to have the love nature. Yeah. And that's the fruit of the Spirit. And when you start loving people, you're even going to find out you love yourself. Oh my God, I even love this guy in here. I even hold my, I hold him once in a while because I know it's, I'm holding the Lord. Come on, haven't you ever felt like nobody loved you? Yes. Yes. That's what I do. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. These signs will follow them that believe. So he says, they also who dwell in the furthest parts are afraid of your signs. And that's why I talked in here. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 14. And... Actually, back to 12. And then, are you there? Okay, go to 14. Chapter 14, verse 1. Notice what it says. What does it say, the first two words? What does it say? God is what? Why are we pursuing love? See, that's the most important thing. Love the Lord. Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, i got to deal with me to love me. 
Bible says if I clothe myself, I love myself. These people on the street don't love themselves. They're hurting. They need help. You can tell when people don't love themselves. You can just tell the way people dress or get in your car. You know, I, I want to be a father, but I'm, a, I'm not allowed to because I offend people. Has anybody ever thought in a car to have a garbage bag? I, I mean, that thing is so simple. Throwing your stuff in the back of the car, I, I don't get this stuff. Excuse me, Pastor Al, but I'll, I'll make room for you. I want to be a father so bad you have no idea. But you've got to let me. Why do you get offended when daddy's talking? God doesn't pull any punches with me. <clears throat> I've been beat up so many times by man, I know what it's like. I'm not talking physically now. Work, work for a big company, you'll know what I'm talking about. Pursue love and what? Desire. What does it say? Desire. Oh, wait a minute. What does desire mean? Yeah, I, I, Lord, I, I need this because the body needs it. See, here's what we say. I want to be able to prophesy so everybody can see me. Now you're going to go through it because now you've got to be broken. We have two pastors we deal with, Hector and Robert, that have been so broken, you guys, that when they talk, it's like a sp you're like a sponge just sucking it up. I just re-listened to Rob Pastor Robert's message that he dedicated the church. Oh, my God. I, I, it's embarrassing just to hear him say, I feel so honored to be here. I'm thinking, with the one that's honored. Come on, you go up there and they treat us like we're kings. We're equals. We've been in Mexico. Uh, I remember when uh, Jake came with me and I almost lost him one night because he was dying. I have no phone. They left us in this home by ourselves. I don't even know where I am, someplace in Kalima. So I had to trust God. The guy's choking to death. And instantly, in the he'll tell you, instantly, in Jesus' name, he was healed. Because we couldn't go to the hospital. We couldn't call anybody. I had to stand on the word of God. And he came with me on this trip. And so I figured he's protected because he came with me. And he'll tell you today, I was instantly healed. And I was dying at the point of death. I don't know what he was choking on, but he wasn't breathing. That's how the devil can slip in on us when we don't know how to fight him. Amen. 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 And now, now to go over to verse 14. And isn't this funny? I, excuse me, 12. Even so, you, since you are zealous or you want for spiritual gifts, let it be for edification or building up of the church that you seek to excel. Why do you want this gift? To help your brother and sister. We heard from one of the elders this morning that he found out his family was the church. When you get that, we have a family. At the funeral last week, a lady came up and said, uh, I want you to know I got saved today. I said, huh? She says, no, I'm serious. And she starts crying. I really got saved today. See, that was a real thing. It was real. I want the real thing. Remember that Coke commercial or some commercial says the real thing. You guys, the phony religion, the phony preachers. I was just told by a kid recently that's gone back to religion. All you want is our money. I never saw a penny from him. I'm really looking for a lot of money. <laughs> By the way, if any of you need to, uh, to send a tithe into God's Grace Church of Tempe, we'll take it. And if you want to help our mission program, we never touch any of the mission money. Amen. Everything that comes in, we even pay for the, uh, to send it out. Amen. We just, we, I will not touch God's money because I'm not going to jail for anybody. I've even turned down money because they were going to tell me where to use it. No, don't give the church something and then tell them me where you're putting it so you can get a tax rate right, right off. 
be different if it was a ministry that we knew. But you're not going to send your kids to school through me. You, come on, because you can write off a lot of money by doing that. Amen. So we want to be honest. Go over to uh, chapter, we're in chapter 14 and verse 26. This is what it says. How is it, brethren, whenever you, when you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has it? Oh, oh you've got to be kidding. Am I reading this right? Has a what? We've got to learn how to use this tongue, don't we? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Has a revelation. So I'm going to run out of church right after church so I don't have to talk to anybody. Why don't you experience? Let's just say, I'm sitting next to Linda, and I say, you know, I have a revelation that I got this week. Can I share it with you? I need it to be tested. You know what she would say? Go for it. <laughs> right, Linda? See, if you can't do it here, how are you going to do it in Mexico? How are you going to do it up? How are you going to follow Marge up there? If you can't do it with your brothers and sisters, how on earth are you going to do it out there? So it says, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. I'm just going to talk about two of the gifts, and then I'm going to close. And it goes down, this is chapter 12, verse 8. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the Spirit. Let me tell you how simple this is. <clears throat> Recently, when I had the, the vision of the bridge, Okay, a lot of times I have the word of knowledge for you, but I don't have wisdom to give it. If you ask me, should I say it? I'm going to say no. Because you don't have wisdom. Come on. So, I'm praying for this person, and all of a sudden, I see, in the Spirit, I see this bridge. And this bridge is long, straight, going into the past. And so, while I'm praying, I say, Lord, what is the interpretation? See, I have the word of wisdom, uh, excuse me, knowledge. I'm dealing with somebody's past. Amen. But what do you want me to do, Lord? Now I need wisdom. Wisdom deals with today and tomorrow. Yep. Knowledge, the word of knowledge deals with past. Yes. Like Carol, when you first came to the church, I saw something that happened over you when you were younger. You know, and things like that. So I, I, I'm asking the Lord while I'm praying for this person. And, you know, we use this at church already. And a couple of you have come up to me and said, I've been telling the devil he belongs on the other side of the bridge. So I says, Lord, then the wisdom came. I said, if you will take the name of Jesus Christ, you can blow up that bridge. Yes. yes. Didn't we do that a couple Sundays ago? Yeah. And that bridge is blown up. So now the devil, here's what you tell him. You can, you're in. You can't cross that bridge. In Jesus' name, stay over there. See, that was the word of knowledge. Then I asked for an interpretation. Then I got the wisdom on what to do. It's a, these gifts are that simple. That's why I don't understand why people fall asleep when you talk about them. We should be so excited. My God, discerning of spirits, what does that mean? Is it a good spirit or a bad spirit? It doesn't mean gossip. <laughs> That's what people think. No. They're all very simple. What's faith? Some translations call it special faith. What's special about it? You just know that you know that you know. <coughs> Amen. 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 Father, I just ask you to bless this word this morning, Lord. Let us each realize that these signs will follow them who have believed. We don't follow the signs. We follow the sign giver, the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit of God, we just ask you this morning to empower us to believe the word. You said, without faith it is impossible to please you, Lord. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is the rewarder to those who diligently seek him. We're diligent this morning, Lord. 
We're hungering and thirsts after righteousness so we can be filled. We want to die to the world and become part of the heavenly realm here on earth, Lord. We want to see you to stretch forth your hand and we're his hands in case you didn't know. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, signs and wonders would be done. And then we see in the next chapter, the shadow of Peter healed the sick. We know shadows don't heal. But when you're standing in the presence of God, you make a shadow. And if you're not in the presence of God, there's no light, so there's no shadow. That's a deep revelation. Lord, bless these, your people, in Jesus' name. If you need prayer this morning, come up to the altar.